I had low back pain like everyone else, but fixed it with posture promoting exercises. My back hurt for years. I hated standing still. I'd strain a hamstring every year running or playing sports, and my core just didn't look right in the mirror. Surprisingly, it all traced back to a common issue, my hips. What causes poor hip and back posture? Can corrective exercises fix it? And what can you do to prevent issues like mine? Well, let's get into it. <laughs> Two weeks ago, I detailed Dr. Vladimir Yanda's observation of upper cross syndrome. It's a muscular and postural misalignment issue of the head and shoulders. Yanda frequently observed this same issue with our hips and lower back. He termed this lower cross syndrome. A tight back and hip flexors are seen with weak abs and glutes. This causes the hips to be excessively tilted forwards. And while some tilt is normal, when the tilt goes beyond eight degrees, that's when it starts to cause issues. For example, excessive pelvic tilt inhibits the glute muscles, therefore rendering our largest muscles useless. This causes the hamstrings to take over for the glutes job, also called synergistic dominance. This added stress in the hamstrings is likely what ended many of my running and sports seasons. And here, I thought my hamstrings were just cursed. And besides decreasing athletic performance and increasing the risk of injury, it affects our day-to-day -day health too. It is commonly suspected of causing lower back pain, which I've had. And this poor posture can lead to other compensations in the body. And if I wanna to live to 100, I don't want my knees, hips, or lower back being destroyed by the age of 70. So I wanna prevent these issues today. I scoured PubMed for answers, but didn't find a lot. A meta-analysis from 2019 concluded that both stretching and strengthening are relevant. This is the approach I took. First, identify if you have lower cross syndrome. Stand with normal posture in front of a mirror and look for an overarched lower back. Some arch is gonna be normal. Or have somebody take a video of you doing push-ups to see if your hips tilt forward and sway closer to the ground instead of keeping a straight flat back. Or flip through your Instagram to see if you posted any of those popular butt photos. I can see my issue in the mirror, and if I watch myself doing push-ups or planks, I can see my hips falling towards the floor. Unfortunately, no Instagram photos to confirm the findings. This led me to implement specific exercises and stretches to correct the problem. And while I don't have a specific routine that I follow, like with upper cross syndrome, these are the most effective exercises that I've now incorporated into my regular strength training program. Hip thrusts. These target the weak gluteus maximus muscles. If you don't have a bench, glute bridges are a good substitute. Substitute. For hip thrusts, I first sit close to the bench, I then place both shoulder blades on the bench and extend my arms out for balance. Then I raise my hips to the ceiling in a tabletop position for one repetition. I perform these to near exhaustion for three sets. Ideally, you'd progress this movement with a barbell for added resistance over weeks or months of progress. Without a barbell, one-legged hip thrusts will work. I do three hard sets twice a week. Second, glute med sequence. I found this gluteus medius sequence in Tim Ferriss' book, Tools of Titans, and I've been following it ever since. There are seven variations of the glute med exercises that are performed one after the other. I've worked my way up to 10 repetitions of each for two sets twice a week. Start by lying down on your side. Then you'll use your top leg for the following sequence. One, up downs. Two, front kicks. Three, back kicks. Four, full kicks. Five, clockwise circles, six counterclockwise circles, and seven bicycles. Lately, I've added reverse bicycles for a sequence of eight. And third, dead bugs. Strengthening the core is key to fixing lower cross syndrome. And while I do a variation of planks and rock climbers within my core sessions, I think dead bugs might be the most effective exercise for this syndrome. Lie down on your back, confirm your lower back is touching the floor. This marker is key for resisting pelvic tilt. Reach your arms and legs to the ceiling with a 90 degree bend in the knees. Finally, lower the opposite arm and opposite leg to the floor slowly and return to the starting position. Perform the movement with alternating arms and legs. I do 20 of these for two sets twice a week. The dead bug can be progressed by reaching higher towards the ceiling so your head and shoulder blades remain off the floor. These are the three exercises that I found most effective for this syndrome, but stretches are also important too. Frequently I've sat in 90-90 stretches while eating dinner. 90-90s are good for developing internal and external hip rotation. I also do kneeling hip flexor stretches as a part of my post-run stretching routine. By stacking these stretches onto my current habit routines, it feels less like one more thing to do. If I can incorporate some of these things into my daily lifestyle, it just makes it that much easier. So here are my final thoughts. 
For years, I didn't understand my frequent hamstring injuries or my lower back pain, but it turns out my hips have a lot to do with it. And if excessive anterior pelvic tilt or lower cross syndrome didn't affect me today, it'd likely cause issues down the road if I didn't correct it. Hip thrusts, glute meat exercises, and dead bugs are strengthening some of my weak muscles. 90-90s and hip flexors are loosening some of the tight muscles in my hips. Overall, my hips not only look more normal now in front of a mirror, but I'm also feeling healthier too. This is the first year that I've run thousand miles plus injury free, no issues this year. And I'm looking to just keep that going on into next year. So yeah, these are my latest habits for health excellence. Thanks for stopping by and I look forward to seeing you guys next week.